en Aura. Yes, yes, people. What's going on? Welcome back to Saeed TV and some breaking, breaking news today. Sheikh Jassim makes an improved bid to buy Manchester United. We have some hope. We have some hope that that rat in Jim Radcliffe isn't going to buy Manchester United Football Club. I've got a man like Kaz with a glazer out scarf in the back. What are you telling me, Kaz? You good? <laughs> I'm very good, alhamdulillah. Shalom, shalom, everyone. You know what I'm saying? Uh, nah, man, I'm obviously... I, I think I've been saying... I think I said, I've said it, it on a few shows. Look, I've been waiting for one journal because he's been, for me, the one that's... Uh, what, what's it called? He's been on top of the news since, right? And it doesn't mean yes, it's going to happen, be, yeah. obviously. There's no point getting gassed or anything like that or getting giddy. But the one person I've looked for personally is Mike Keegan. And Mike Keegan... Through the, no, uh, through the news again, and then you saw all the sheep, hurry, hurry, hurry. You saw Chikorito in, in what's it called, Fabrizio Romano try getting on it, the tapping merchant. And then, yeah, man, here we are, man. You know what I'm saying? So, oh, man, this is it's interesting times. Like, uh, the, the package from my understanding of reading actual uh, news article, not just the headline, obviously, it's, it's uh, roughly 500 million pounds or more than what he originally offered. Hmm. Which, which is, is still the under the under the value of what they want or as a package, but we will get into all that. Uh, Nuruddin is here getting giddy with me, I'm sure. Nuruddin, are you giddy? No. Why no. are you not giddy, man? Get giddy. No, 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 no. It's not, it's, it's, get giddy, man. They're coming, no, man. The Qataris no, are coming. No, no. Listen, I'm not gonna lie to you. This, there's nothing to get giddy about. Does have, have the Glazers, have you seen the statement on Manchester United website? Or is it something that you're not telling me? Tell, today? Oh, no, yeah. no, no, obviously we won't. We won't hear exactly. anything from them exactly. until it's over. Right? That's the only day that you ever see me giddy when they say they're no longer the owners of Manchester United. Mate. I'm going to see a full on, like, you know, positive learning on that day. That's going to be beautiful, man. But Listen, it's not going to be one day. Are you kidding me? I'm not going to sleep for a week. Yeah, you know what? Exactly. I'll come over, we'll have a party. 
I'll get the um, I'll get the non-alcoholic drinks and we'll have a we'll have a, a non-alcoholic bevy. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> big up um, uh, big up HK Music 5.5 billion. Let's get into it. Let's get into it, guys. Make sure you smash a like on the video. There's 600 people in there already. Make sure you subscribe to Never a Foul and also and make sure you subscribe to the Nordish channel as well. But let's start off with obviously Fabrizio Romano and reported it. To be fair, it was from Mike Keegan, but I'm blocked by Mike Keegan, so I can't report on him, unfortunately. <laughs> if you don't block me, then maybe I can give you a shout out, bro. But if you why did he block you? Because I was talking about Ollie in it. I said Ollie weren't good enough and he didn't like it. So oh, and he was God. making all these little PR nonsense about Ollie and all that. And I just said I called him out, man. And obviously he's blocked me since him and that Paul Hurst as well. But is what it is. That Liverpool supporter. He blocked me. Yeah, Miguel Delaney, I mean, that's Nuri's best mate, that. You know what I mean? I, I, um, I, he, he, blo he blocked me. Oh, my. Well, I cannot wait. Yeah, he must be hurting right now. Shajik Jasim has made another increased bid. As always, it's for 100% of the Man United. will clear the debt. All the debt includes a separate fund directed solely at the club and the community. Sources guaranteed. Guaranteed. This is a significant increase over initial proposal. Um... Kaz, what are you making of that? Just that, first of all, the fact that he's made an increased bid. What are you making of that story, first of all? I think it's not something that none of us didn't know. Like I, I think we, I think we've all said along the lines. Look, look, Arabs don't lose. You know, it's it's a big shame to lose it to to you know when it comes to this kind of situation. Like if they want something, they're gonna go get it, but they're not gonna do it at a price where it's stupid. They know Ratcliffe probably they they can't keep extending his funds out. To the point, it's literally stretching his own business out, right? But that's what he's already doing. Yeah. Now, to my understanding of today's article is that, yeah, the five is closer to five billion than it is six billion, but then Ratcliffe's is closer to six billion than it is five billion. So apparently, there's yeah. a there's a few hundred million difference. The difference is, is that with the with the Qataris, what I feel like they're doing smart here is like, look, we'll give you this amount of money, but what it does, yeah. it clears all the debt that's not included in in everything. Also, there's a separate fund. And you can have that now. Or you wait for Ratcliffe for a few hundred million separation and you'll get that in about three years. And that's an if. That's not even a guarantee. So mm. that's why I said, um, like, it's, it's what the Glazers want now. Now, if I'm being honest, I wouldn't want to wait three years for a few billion. I'd want of it now. Of course not. Of course so that's not. The way, that's the way we look at it. If we look at Glazers being greedy, then they would want the money now. That's the way I look at it. But I think towards Nuruddin and his understanding, it's like, bro, there's no official statement or nothing you never know with these uh these cretins you know like these vultures so mm. it's what it is man it's again it's just a waiting game up we I, just, I need something from lawton times or from the rain group or something like it like we, we need to know the, the rain group won't do it until the due diligence is all sorted so that in itself is is, is obviously going to come in a while we got tom in the building tom you're right there are you okay yeah big up lads how we doing yeah not too bad man not too bad um Nuruddin, um, from that initial statement of the bid and obviously what they've kind of... It's basically a take it or leave it final offer or if, if you don't think it's a final offer, then then say differently. But what have you made of that? Are you still a bit disappointed in Jasim in the way he's kind of maybe, you know, still not the value of what the, the Glazers want? Are you, where, where are you in that in terms of the bid, new bid today? To be fair, we don't know what the Glazers want really because everybody signed it in DNA. All of it is guesswork. And we don't know what he, what Sheikh Jassim has offered, but people are getting giddy and just putting numbers out there. Nobody really knows. Nobody knows. I told so I, I've told you from day one, all of this was guesswork. It's PR, it's PR agencies, it's PR representatives who are just um, and that's what this is. This ain't this. Listen, nobody truly knows, right? Um, we will know, and I told everybody that there was no hard deadline or soft deadline, 28, 20 this, 20 that. I told yeah. everybody, but nobody wants to listen to me. Every yeah, time. yeah, no, no, no. That, that yeah. one, I think, I think everybody knew after the 28th, maybe. I stop, uh, stop, I believe it, stop believing Time Sport. Stop looking at Time Sport. Like, honestly, forget it. They are literally tapping merchants, bro. They're dirt out. They're waiting for the ball to hit the post before you can score. You get it? That's all they are, man. That's why don't you have to look at certain sources for what they are, man. Everything. Look, yeah. it was only yesterday... They come out with Time Sports saying, yeah, it looks like it's going to go towards uh, Sir Jim. And then before you know it, you got Chris Wheatley, um, obviously from the mail or wherever he is from, um, saying that, yeah, like there's going to be a 
an increase of bid to like six billion close to there from Sheikh Jassim. And then before you know it, all the reports out today. I think it might be guesswork at the, at, at this. Uh, uh, listen, at the end of the day, all of it is guesswork. Nobody knows it's, nothing. Everybody's yeah. treating it because everybody understands there are what millions and millions of United fans, hundreds of millions of United fans. And all of that is on our emotion. So they're all treating it like some transfer thing. It's absolutely ridiculous. That's why I'm not doing any show on it on my, on my channel. I'm not doing any show. Mm. Other than what most people reported, I know that Jim Ratcliffe hasn't got the money. We know that. He hasn't got the money to buy the football. He's got the better so, package. He's got the better so, package right now. No, but but we know that he's got to stay in. And that's why I've come, we've, we've all come out against him saying, you know what I mean? Jim the Rat Ratcliffe, that's what he is. He's a yeah. Rat Ratcliffe. He but he's still insisting on having 50% stake right now as it, as it stands. You know, so it's at the end of the day, I, I understand the way he wants to do the what, what he wants to do with the club, but I'm not getting giddy about anything or anybody, say, unless I know or uh, we've heard it and is there and people representing these people. I'm hearing reports that there are too many intermediate, in, intermediaries. I told everybody, and this is just from what I know of the Glazers, I told everybody's like. You don't understand how it works. So many yeah. dickhead pricks, right? Who are <laughs> Leave them alone, man. <laughs> nah, 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 so they are their pricks, right? And space is telling me, ah, eh, well, it is this is how execution works. This is how it works. <laughs> I have to set a deadline. And I told oh, you, I, I know you exactly what you're talking about. The it's financial just, experts, Lord, the financial what experts. Them. You know what I told them? Go go fuck yourself with all of that. Oh, oh, Joe Collins. Oh, right, now nah, nah, listen, listen, Joe listen. Joe Collins, Glazer, Norwich, man. man. Why do you have to be violent, man? The financial experts. No, no, they don't no, for the football club. Said, I'm the biggest. <laughs> listen, I'm the biggest fucking expert on the Glazers. I know how the Glazers work. So every That's time I do a fucking video, I say Glazer Games. Why do I say Glazer Games? Because I know that's what they do. I've been covering these fuckers for you know when, right? Yeah. Having to research these. Anything they do, that's what they do. So I know the Glazers, <laughs> right? I don't know Ineos. I don't know how how fucking takeovers work. I don't know anything about fucking accounting. I know nothing about that other fucker. <laughs> but I know who the fuck the Glazers are. I know what they're about. I know no, what they're down, about. They're not, they're not I know going what anywhere. they do. I know what they're <laughs> talking about, Saeed, right? So nobody tells me. But Who's when I go to the Europa League, do you? Who's mentioning Europa League? No one's mentioning Europa League. Yeah, yet, it's not about it. Europa League. But suddenly <laughs> these kids start breaking down to me about fucking takeover and, and about what a takeover happens. And by law, you have Why to. Why do you think I'm not in their spaces, man? I don't in the spaces, man. No, 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 no. Listen, listen Saeed, I know I'm happy to chop it up with anybody in the spaces. I'm happy to yeah. do it. But when people start telling me this, and I tell them, simple, I know the fucking Glazers. <laughs> Glazers don't do anything by hurrying it up. They drag yeah. out every fucking thing. They'll manipulate and use every trick under the fucking, everything they can find. So, yeah. to me, all of them are signed NDA. You see Ollie like a little fucking mouse open his mouth. Why? Because his NDA ran out. 18-month <laughs> NDA, they clapped on him, yeah? Paid him that whatever million. What would you do if you signed the NDA? What would you do, Norden? Say that again? If, if the NDA, like if you had to sign the NDA and you couldn't tell, say a word about uh, the glaze and what, what would you Why do? Why would just... I ever put myself say, hey, come on. Why would I ever <laughs> put my, do anything with those cretins and put myself on the any, any NDA? You have to do something for those cretins to get yeah. money out of them so for you yeah. to go in the NDA. So yeah. that's <laughs> what I'm saying to you. Listen. At the end of the day, it was this 11th hour bid. 11 hour bid. Listen, if <laughs> Jasmine makes another fucking bid two weeks later, it's not 11th hour, is it? Why is it going to be then? Is it going to be the 21st hour? What the fuck is that going to be, right? It is all bullshit. At yeah. the end of the day, somebody's got something to sell. Somebody wants to buy. Games are being played. Negotiations. People... Uh, Bluffing. It's like fucking playing uh, poker. That's what it is. So not everybody's guessing, right? There are certain... Listen, I know there are certain journalists who are backed by a um, PR company that's representing Jim Yeah, Rattin. of course. And there's, other, there's, there's, there's others. There's another PR, PR firm uh, representing the Qatar bid. So that's what it is. That's all this is. is PR. And then there's the Glazer fucking PR. 
Glazonomics PR with Neil Ashton and all his network. So this is what it is. So I am not, I told everybody from day one, I don't get giddy. I don't get overexcited until it is the New York Stock Exchange. It'll be on Monday. It will make the New York Stock Exchange within a, within a working weekday. It will be yeah. announced there okay. and then. Manchester United no longer belongs to the Glazers. This is what the new owners want to do if they want to keep on the New York Stock Exchange. Well, they got, well, they have the stake, but yeah, I know what you mean in terms of the main kind of shareholder. I want to bring in Tommy in here. Memphis says he up with Sir Jim Bid. There is a lot of risk involved. No one knows what stage, no one knows the stage of the club will be in in the next three years. So risky for both parties. Uh, Tom, what's your um, kind of assessment on um, tonight and what's happened? Uh, let us know your opinion, my friend. Yeah, well, my opinion is is as it always been. I think with the the Qataris, like. I've always stated that I don't think they would have come this far to to lose, and the I guess the re rhetoric has been that they have the golden riches, and Sir Jim Ratcliffe's a broken billionaire. Like, yeah. if that's the you know, a lot of people said that you know, how can you even script that? Somebody's a billionaire, but they're broke in in, in a circumstance like this. Yeah. But the problem with Sir Jim is the cost of borrowing and the cost of financing to to buy anything like. You take, for example, Elon Musk, who was, you know, the richest man in the world. The loans and the bonds that he got to actually facilitate him to buy Twitter, he was only supposed to buy it for 11 billion. And he ended up buying it for nearly 44, I think it was 40 or 44 billion pounds or billion dollars or whatever they the currency for that time. Like, and I just think you can be a billionaire, but you can still not be confident. You can't be comfortable. And to Jim Ratcliffe in this case, because he went to Old Trafford undervaluing what Manchester United was worth mm. initially at 69%. Because the thing we always know with Sir Jim is he's never kept his word once in this process. No, he hasn't. He's never kept it because he said, first of all, in an interview in October, if Manchester United was for sale in the summer, we'll have a go at it. Yeah. Have a go at it means you'll buy it all. So Max. then you actually, oh, and a process opens, you enter. You put a statement out to say that you're in the process, along with Ineos, yeah. and that you want to buy a majority stake. So a majority stake is 69%, what the Glazer family own now. You just yeah. change the Glazers to put Sir Jim Ratcliffe's name in it. That's it. And the Glazers are no more. Then as the process has gone on, because he's undervalued Manchester United and he doesn't have the right numbers in place to buy the club at the valuation that was needed, mm. he's then had to reassess or he won't get anywhere he won't even get a foot in the club but as he's done with the proposal where he's offering 50 percent, keep joel and avi in and that's the new one here as well this this is part of the proposal as well and uh, one of the, yeah, but, the proposal we're talking about um is yeah, this yeah, but... lower the amount <laughs> he wanted to buy from an initial 69 percent for all the glazed state so just over fifty percent, which allowed co-chairman Joel and Avron to yeah. retain some involvement. Well, the thing, yeah. the thing, the only retreat that I would say is the Glazer family and Joel and Avram especially, they went to the investment group Apollo eighteen months ago and they tried to buy out their four siblings. They tried to do pretty much what they wanted to do with Sir Jim now. Use some money to buy out the four siblings, and instead of offering a minority stake, Sir Jim would want a partial stake That's... at fifty percent. But he would get the control from it because he would want the Class B shares over the over the Glazer family, and they would have to settle for Class A. But I'm not buying it. I'm really not buying it with the Sajim thing. And yeah, the more no one is about, the, yeah. you know, the, no, but the more I thought about it, Saeed, yeah. is when you think about it, you're putting you're like Joel and Avram are prepared to sit here and give the keys to somebody else, and they yeah. are gambling that. Back. Sir Jim Ratcliffe is going to make Manchester United a success because people could say, listen, Sir Jim Ratcliffe could buy in Man United and, you know, blow up it, you know, buy the best players in the world, build a new stadium. Like, he could surprise us all. Like, there's no, there's no, yeah, there's yeah, no of course. shame in saying that. But if he doesn't and it does a complete, the, like, 90 degree turn and it does the complete opposite, mm. he doesn't invest in the stadium, he doesn't do anything that he promises. No. Nope. The Glazer family, you've basically stayed for an extra two, three years and you've got no more money for it and you might have even lost money on what you might get for 20%. Mm. But with the Qatari thing, 
where Sheikh Yassim is now coming with an, an improved offer upon what it was before, as I reiterated, if he has to bid again, he will bid again. And he has mm. done. So, mm. in hence saying that he has bid again, in my theory, would mean that he knew he was behind. The rain group stated to him, because Sir Jim Ratcliffe has already been on the ballot mm. sheet as the preferred bidder, the Glazer family had made the mind up before the weekend that's just passed that Sir Jim Ratcliffe privately is the preferred bidder. You can call it gamesmanship. You can call it like they want to drag more yeah. money out of people. But yeah. they'd made the mind up because they get a bit of cash on the side and Joel and Avram get to stay. But via doing this now, he has thrown a massive curveball in terms of, well, you can stay, but you might not get bought out for three, four years for that over 20% if you get bought out at all, like Cass said. Or you get a big payment now in a big instalment, mm. yeah. and then I give you the extra cash after I fully purchase the club. Mm. So you're getting two payments. You yeah. get one while we negotiate, and it's wired over when everything's signed. And then when I'm then exchanged, like Nuruddin said, when the New York Stock Exchange are informed of an ownership change of Manchester United, and then I disclose what I want to do with the, the New York Stock Exchange, whether I want to change it to a different exchange group, mm. or I want to completely remove it and try and buy the shares out. From there, he can then say, oh, right, well, I am the new owner of Manchester United, and then he will release all the rest of the funds to the Glazer family. But this improvement on bids and everything, it's as simple as this. The Rain Group on Monday gave their declaration to the Glazer family on what they said they suggest the Glazers do. But before then, privately, they'd already announced Sir Jim Ratcliffe privately as a family, they decided he should be the preferred bidder. Mm. But the Rain recommendation was... The current market and the people that you have at the table, you need to pursue a full bio option where possible. You need to pursue it now because you won't get this sort of money in the process, in any process, yeah, yeah, yeah. now or in five years. So you go for it now and you get a full bio option or you potentially risk losing more money in the long term. Mm. Because you're putting a lot of faith in Sir Jim Ratcliffe, who yep. you don't know from Adam. And if yeah. anything, he's not put any sort of pledges that he's going to invest over the... Oh, he hasn't, though. He said it, it's going to be but, through through a loan. And this it, is a... Yeah, this is what I mean. He's going to do it through loans and that. But the thing with Sheikh Yassim is, even upon purchasing the club, he's already got funds in place after purchase. Wow. People can say it for what it is. It's only a billion pounds. But a billion pounds still goes a long way in terms of yeah, you, yeah, can of still imp you can still redevelop Old Trafford to a certain extent with that. Yeah. And the thing with the Qataris is they will always replenish funds every six to 18 months. They mm. do it with PSG. They replenish funds, but they don't, like you say, with Sheikh Yassim, he's a chairman of a bank. Yeah. He sees the money coming in and out every single day. So uh -huh. cash he knows what it's about. Is, Cash at hand isn't a problem. He knows what he's talking about. There you go, Saeed. Yeah. Cash at hand isn't a problem. Whereas Sir Jim, he's got to sign all these agreements for debt, loans, all these other clauses and everything. But we come to the same point. He's made this, as people call it, the 11th hour bid. As Nuruddin's already stated, and I've reiterated it many times, nobody knows the numbers because of an NDA agreement. Yeah. So anybody who says 6 billion, 7 billion, you know, or, you know, Sir Jim's, you know, got close to six billion pounds like how can he get close to six billion pounds when he's offering to only buy 50 percent yeah it doesn't make sense no the it numbers doesn't don't the numbers don't lie if you know how to work maps Facts. You, listen you could have a basic gcse grade and you'll probably know how to add up the maths to, to calculate how much manchester united realistically <laughs> should be worth so yeah. you don't need like you know say you don't need some financial experts in spaces or anything to be telling you how mm. to value what Manchester United is worth or what Absolutely. people are telling you. Yeah. But anyway, Zola, you super chat side. Go on. Yeah. Zoa Tank here says for people for people saying that United isn't worth 5.5 .5 billion. Uh, we revenue six million six hundred million a year times that by ten years, that's six billion right there. We're not even winning at the moment. Qataris aren't stupid. They know what the club is worth. Do you agree with that as um do you think they obviously, you know, I mean, not kind of trying to pull in for, for more than what they, they kind of like see the club as as a value as? Yeah, I think they do. I think they value, I think both companies, Ineos and I think they both value what the club's actually worth. And I think 
the Glazers in the end knew what they were doing. They're just trying to f- leech as much money out as possible. As Nuruddin would state himself, he knows what the Glazers are like. I think most of us know what the Glazers are like. This is exactly yeah. what they wanted. And this is exactly what they got. But not to what they thought. Because now there's other things involved. Oh, okay. I'll give you 500 million more, but that's not, that, that's not included in, you know, the offer that we're going to give you. Uh, or, you know, it's little things here, little things there. There's probably some side deals that we don't know about as well. You know, like uh, it could be Glazer partnerships, Glazer business deals with both companies. What can, what can benefit as well? Like there's stuff that we're not going to know. Um, and I believe the packages are steep because remember in these packages, it's not just the buying of the club. It's including the stadium, the training complex, right. the everything, the everything surrounding, you know, Manchester United that needs to be done, <laughs> including the dusty old toilets. But um, <laughs> so <laughs> you already uh, love them toilets. You have to, you have to be optimistic <laughs> with this. And I've come to terms. If it's Surgeon Ratcliffe, I'm, I'm gonna open. I'm gonna be welcome. I'm gonna welcome him with open arms at the end of the day if he sticks to his word. If, if, big well, if. with the Glazers. Because you know we you know, if you're coming with the Glazers, you're part of the Glazers. Yeah, no, you are. But at the end of the day, regardless, if he says the Glazers are going to go, and I know we don't like it, but we, we have to think of worst case scenarios for ourselves as well as Manchester United fans, right? So we have, yeah, to, yeah, yeah. Well, we we have to. to. We have to do that as human beings in mm. day-to-day life. But everyone deserves mm. a chance to prove themselves. That's all I'm going to say. They have to prove themselves. And right now, what his issue is, you got Glazers in, that means you're a bit of a rat. No, no, you are a rat. Two, your club in France ain't looking uh, sweepy clean. Even your fans want you out. And, f- and yeah. three, what Nuruddin said, you've never stuck to your word, mate. So you have mm-hmm. to, but at the end of the day, as you have to give a chance because you know what? You've got no choice. Are you going to go and protest from day dot? Are you going to go to the ground if you can and then I'm, start doing it? I'm, 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 I'm just saying, back if out, man. No, no, I'm too Ratcliffe out for Glazers. Everyone, if Glazers are here until they're gone, you have to be the uh, Ratcliffe out. Yeah. Oh, it's just, yeah. it's, it's to the point, it's like, bro, like if you care about this club so much and you know you can't afford it, why are you still here? Mm. Like, go buy mm. Tottenham or something, bro. You got, you got literally sponsoring everything within Tottenham in the Austin. Like, go, go deal with that or go buy Liverpool, man. Like, if you care about Man United, clearly, you know, it's a bit. Bit, like, much bigger project than what you think it's going to be and to the point you have that's to that's the way he was going to get in though Kant. this yeah, is the this, only way he was going to get in this, see, this the only is what way I'm, but this is what I'm saying it's like it's, I just don't understand it like you you say you're a Man United supporter from mm. young but if you know what you care about the club sometimes you've got to let things go that you love and that's the yeah, way I think yeah, with Sir yeah. Jim like let it go bro yeah. you know mm. the Qataris will, it'll be in better hands you know it mm. will you know what I'm saying? So let us have a chance of being the dominant force we were meant to be, anyways. But we aren't because we're not. It's selfish, though, isn't it? And it's selfish yeah. for his own ways, you know? That's ultimately yeah, yeah. it. It's selfish and for you, his own and you, know, you know what it is for me as well? It's not just the, um, it's not just the club, it's how it's going to transform Manchester as well. So mm. we see that the east side of Manchester, look what's happening over there, just with uh, obviously. With the, uh, and you're from London, you know, in it, you've seen yeah, it. It's, it's yeah, I love, so it's I love right. Manchester, man. The vibe, the, the family feel, you know, it's always you feel together, you know. You actually, I, like, I like London, I like London. You go to from one area to another, you know their names, you know, what I mean? and they just see you like, yeah, well, I got like, like we do when we go, when we walk to Old Trafford, how many people are beeping in the car, man, and they're saying, like, well, yeah, I'm, yeah, like, yeah. I'm like, who's that? I don't know, but uh, is, do, you, do you get what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. it's like, not only that, yeah. it won't. Trafford in itself, Salford in itself, I know it's up and coming at the moment, is that area itself can transform Manchester as well, the city alone. So now it's not just the east side and the west side, it's all of it. And also, the obviously, the centre. So, yeah, man, it's like, you know, I've got asked, like, mm. I'm looking to move to Manchester soon anyways, at some point. Mm. You know, I've been up there how many countless times as well, you know, mm. and it's just... It's just you can't you can't beat it, man. It's just it's just good for economy as well and just the fans in general. And it's a good feel. And then you want a real powerhouse, bro. Some bro, right now, City are is it that's Thanos. We need to have we need yeah. the Avengers to assemble. You know what I mean? We need yeah. all the clubs to go to City and park the bus and get them draws. Draws. Mm. One one draw. But we have to also do something. We have to also do something. Um it's Nordin, I don't know if you're there still. Nordin, are you there? Yeah, of course, me. Yeah, 
Yeah, so basically, I want it. Uh, it's obviously that Simon Stone is for Western BBC says he said we felt that an announcement could come this week given the transfer window opens less than a month, which would give the manager Eric Tanak some clarity of the summer budget. However, there is no guarantee this will happen. You know, we, we need to know now, innit? Obviously, now we're into the phase 58th of the bidding process and whatnot. And, you know, the, the, week, the, the season finishes about three weeks' time, probably two weeks' time, to be honest with you. I think it's no, actually it's 10 days. The season finishes in about 10, 12 days because you've got to remember, we play on the 28th, the last game. So there's about, yeah, 12 days left until the season finishes, you know. Um, obviously, Ten Hag must be panicking right now. He must be thinking, looking at this news, thinking, oh my God, man, you can't, can't even get out. You can't even sort out a deal for, to, to sell the club. How long does it take you? Lot? Like he, he must be thinking in his head, like, what a shambles of a club, in it? Like, really? Of course, I told you. I, I, tell every, I direct everybody to go and watch that um, press conference, the one before the second part um, of the press conference uh, before the Brighton game. He basically came out like Rav Ranjit, like came out. Yeah. And Fact. then a couple of days, couple of, couple of press conferences later, he's like, oh, yeah, all these players want to come to Manchester United. You know that uh, people like Neil Ashton and that have been coaching him to say to come out all positive because people have realised shit. He's, he's be, to me, he's frustrated. You've seen him in the last couple of games, Saeed, how animated he's been. He's not been like that all season. He's usually no. been sat back on the bench. But you see how animated he is. So, at the end of the day, this is the Glazers, man. I got a PhD on Glazer, in Glazers and the Glazer fuckingomics. I know how they work, so... For me, deadline this stuff, deadline that, 28, deadline this, Ineos, that, get, get that, all of that BS out of my way, right? Glazers have have gone F with this, and this is on the Glazers. And to sign players, Saeed, usually you're talking to the agents three months out. Sometimes, the, 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 listen, the well-run clubs, six to eight months out. The, 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 the best-run clubs in the world, a year out, they're talking to the team, uh, talking to the agents or the representative of the player. So this is what we're up against. So and we're going to be in another another transfer where for, I've been reading some little reports actually saying that... We've got 100 million team, apparently. Oh, this uh, about, about, so I think it might have been the Super Chat said that Manchester United made... When, when, when did Man United start making 600 million a year? The, those days are gone, mate. Manchester no. United don't make that money anymore. I told you, the Glazers have rinsed us have rinsed the football club. If you look at how much we're in debt at this moment in time, all together with bank loans for transfers, and the debt is 900... Let me just have a look. I just, yeah, I I know, you're, right, you're, you're right. No, so the transfer... It's, our transfer debt, debt right now is 305 million alone. Alone, that's just transfer debt. We t- remember, we pulled out 250 million in May from credit loans mm. from the Glazers to purchase yeah. Casemiro and the rest of them. Yeah, And that doesn't include the other, what, five, 600 million debt. That we already owe any the bank, so we're talking about nine hundred million in debt. So, so, oh, so this is how I'm looking at it. So this is this is the actual figure from March. Yeah, figures in March show United owed nine hundred sixty nine point six million throughout the combination of gross debt, bank borrowings, and outstanding transfers associated yep. with payments. So Manchester United, uh, whoever sent that super chat before. Manchester United yeah. don't make that money. It's the idea of Manchester United making that amount of money is gone. Those days are gone. As I predicted, where everybody was telling me something different. Remember when I kept telling you, Saeed, that they've rinsed it. They've rinsed Manchester United. They, 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 don't, they, they can't make the money that they want anymore out of Man United. Uh, Manchester United. And we already knew, and, and, and I always bring up this quote by um, Woodward, who said, Manchester United don't have to be com- competitive on the football pitch for it to make money. It's like a it's like a mortgage, but mortgage that makes you money. So at the end of the day, this is all coming to a head. So get ready and strapped. And apparently, because of the the least uh, money that's been coming in, the in terms of revenues been coming in, Manchester United mm. are now have to have to be have to so have to uh, are closer to the FFP, and the Premier League is going to be watching. And UEFA are going to be watching very closely. I mm. uh, think it's because. We have to sell players because Manchester United do not sell players, right? City sell players, Chelsea sell players, Arsenal, you know, Liverpool sell players. Mm. These these clubs sell players and actually make money. If I'm not mistaken, the last player that Manchester United, the last couple of players, there, there was that was Daily Blind. We made some money on Daily Blind. Yeah, Daily Blind was six. But to be fair, we didn't make money of Daily Blind, though. Really? Now we, we made a bit. Of, well, listen, we made a bit of money. Made on a this. little. 
You made little, a little. Yeah, little. We, yeah. we, we didn't so make the money last on Chris Woolen. So, so, so the last two players that United, Manchester United made any little money on was Dan James, mm. who wanted to go, and Chris Marlin, who, who wanted to go. Yeah. So the two players Correct. that were Correct. in the contract well. who both yeah. wanted to go. So at the end of the day, we're in for another another, an, another massive thing. And for me, if you clear the debt and if you if you bring down the wages of certain players, because we spent, if you look, if you look at uh, what, oh, yes, ma- right, what right. we spend our yeah. most revenue on side is wages, right? Manchester United. Yeah, we can get that down though. Phil Jones yeah. is leaving. Um, you know, th- th- there needs to be some improvement. A lot of people yeah, yeah, are yeah, so Martial, De Gea, you know, so them so to get rid of them. Tell us, tell us by, tell us you know, by Maguire, maybe Maguire. So but has, that needs proper ownership, not glazenomics to keep them in the team because it's a value. You know, they see players so as a value. I just mean, spend about 120, right? And then we have to make sales to, to, to raise another 100. We might have to sell four or this five. Is why, and this is why I say, this is why I say, get rid of Maguire, obviously, McTominay as well. That's like 30 million there, 30 million there. I'd say, I don't think Maguire's going for much more than that, maybe not even 25. And then get rid of Sancho, mate. 20, 20. Get rid of Sancho. Like, I, I hate to say it, he's on 350k a week. He's not, it doesn't look like he's going to get a start in place. It don't look with Ahmad coming back on hot form and, and it is what you could say, bar for bar, Anthony. Get rid of, get rid of him. There's no place for him in the team. Garnacho's got a new contract. Rashford ain't going nowhere. He's getting a new contract. You know, two on the right. Where does he? Where does I he fit in? I won't be so sure, Cass. I, I won't be so sure about Rashford. I won't be so sure about Rashford because nah, Rashford's no, Rashford's staying already. Come on, man. He's a good no, 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 no. But listen, if you, if I'm advising Rashford, I'm like, yo, I'm not signing a contract until I know who's owning the football club. He's gonna sign regardless. Yeah. He's gonna get his money packet, whether we like it or not. This club is too predictable, if I'm being honest. Like, everything that makes sense doesn't happen. Like, like I'm seeing reports today about Rabio coming to Man United, which is, I think, is rubbish. But then you're looking at Quadio Kone. That makes too much sense. Go get Quadio Kone. That's a guy we could do with. Um, and, and, and many, many more as well. Like, you can you can say all over the pitch. No, but, so, but, but Cass, we're bargain hunting. So we, we're trying to look for players on the free. We're going to be bargain hunting. Yeah, no, but uh, uh, look... I think Man United do need to still make smart deals regardless of the ownership. Even if it is Qatar, we still need to make those good deals. We need to show yeah. just because Qatar's come in doesn't mean we're going to go flaunt this, that and the other or next on on Tom, Dick and Harry. Do you know what I mean? So it's just... Let me, I think we need to let me get this team. one, Kaz. Um, Zoateng TV says here, check all the charts. We are third place in the year in revenue with 645 million in the revenue this year behind City and Real Madrid. But that doesn't mean we need any profit because we are all well in debt. We are uh, run poorly. Yeah, but the books are not balanced, man. That's the problem, isn't it? Like, your books have to... Yeah. Man City and them, like, their books are balanced. Ours is not no, balanced. No, 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 no. Listen, okay. the books, man. <laughs> Last <laughs> off, again. <laughs> well, no, no, but obviously, you know, they're, they're not balanced, obviously, <laughs> in terms of... City are fucking trying that, that pan, mate. And I won't be surprised... <laughs> City <laughs> making it out like they've got bigger fan base than Manchester United, mate. And there's six of them in the fucking. Hey, they're about to get away with it. Imagine this: the day we're here, yeah, in 2023, they could do the treble. They could do the treble and win 300 million. And we still haven't got ownership situation sorted out. It's a joke, mental. It's a joke. Mental. The fact that they're the bar, the fact that they're the bar side, it. I know. I got. I got to live with a City fan as well. Does my brain in every day? Oh, have you seen this about Harlan? Don't give a fuck, bro. Don't care. <laughs> have you seen this? What Jack <laughs> Reed is? I don't care, that mate. Don't care. Don't care. Don't care. <laughs> don't care. <laughs> don't care. <laughs> um, RB Knox says, uh, "Big up to you, guys. Uh, big up people. American ownership with uh, its corporate culture never lays emphasis on the club's legacy and tradition. It's all about margins and profit. Yeah, man, we've been like this for eighteen years, my friend, and we're we're now we we, we had enough." We want them to go. So, uh, like I said, man, I just think for me, this is the this is the take it or leave it. Surely, this is the last bit now, uh, Tom. In it, like you know, this should be it now. Like in terms of, they need to make a decision now, man. Just just end the the cycle in it. Like we're done mm. now. Like make well, a decision. Do, do you know what's funny? Whenever they've blown up with a, a story or they've they've how can I say it? they've left it on a on a cliffhanger because then something's happening in the next couple of days. They've always done it on a Friday. No, yeah, it's normally on a Friday. All At least it's on a Friday. Off now. All of the deadlines for the bids have been on Fridays. You had what happened with Sir Jim Ratcliffe the following weekend on yeah. a Friday, and everybody had the meltdown around that. 
you had the Mike Keegan story saying that Sir Jim was in the in the hot seat on a Friday, like, and then suddenly now you you're on what you're on Tuesday, gives them Wednesday, Thursday, and then probably even Friday they would still be deciding. But the ultimate thing is, Eric Ten Hag will be questioning what what is going on, what is the ownership situation. John Murto will be questioning. Right, I'm the director of football. I need to know what funds I have in place to to acquire players. I need to know what agents I can speak to, what market for players I, I can look into. Do I have to look into the free agent market for now? Or can I look into getting permanent solutions and permanent transfers for the manager? He, you know, he, even people like Richard Arnold are going to be thinking, well, yeah. what is going on with the ownership? Because I need to, I need to be speaking to Adidas about renewing the deal or... I need to be speaking to Team Viewer about what's going on with the sponsors and the commercial side of the club. Every single one of these directors are going to be sweating because they ain't going to be sitting there with their feet up, mate, thinking that it's all done and just mm. because they're in the dark and those are the people that actually run our club. Yeah. And love, love them or hate them, they are what, if you like, keeps our club going at this moment in time. And they don't even have a clue because a lot of what we're hearing is the people at Carrington. They don't even know who's walking through the door either, as well as we do. And they're supposedly going to be getting paid by these people, whether it be for three months or to stay on long term. But the final nail is in the coffin. And if you like it now, shit your sim, I, I believe anyway. I don't think anybody, if he didn't get the club, can say that he didn't pull out all of the stops because nobody here would sit here and say that Manchester United is valued at £6 billion. And if Sir Jim Ratcliffe, I don't care if he's a multi-billionaire, broke billionaire, whatever mm. you want to call it, the rhetoric, he will not sit there with his Ineos delegations or his financial experts and say Man United is worth yeah. £6 billion, pounds because it isn't. It isn't. It I know they're not. It's bluff. It, it is isn't. Really and do you, know, do you know something, Saeed, right? It really yeah. gets me because we know with Sheikh Yassim's offer, Bank of America, as executives and advisors, have been advising mm. what to bid and what they believe Man United has valued at. Mm. The re, the reports that come from the US, from the Bank of America, leaks that came out of there, was that mm. the maximum they said Manchester United should ever be valued at was £5 billion. Pounds. And even that is paying over the odds of what you should pay. Yeah, Just there. And the Glazer family, the only thing I can say in this case is, the retreat that we've <laughs> always heard with the Glazers is, we want a billion pounds each, or we want a billion conversion rate. We want a billion each. Whether it be pounds, dollars, whatever. Mm. And Woodward wants his bit as well. Woodward's well, getting his stake. Well, listen, fuck Woodward at this moment in time, mate. He can go and do his, <laughs> e he can do, go and do his e sports. Even Tom's swearing today, man. It's all going off but, today. You're a look, bad influence, man. Look, I'm usually the one that swears as well, we, man. We can, we can go through it all, all day. But with the yeah. Glazer family, they want a billion each. The thing when you look at the conversions, because the dollar's better than the pound at the moment, when you look at it and you balance it up, if he was to bid near five, maybe even 5.5, .5, the Glazers ain't going to be keeping it in pounds, are they? Because they reside, no, where no, the no. U they, they reside in the US. Pounds is not worth anything, so man. Pounds it's not, not worth, worth anything. anything nowadays. So no, man. when you convert it back, and it's funnily enough that he the headquarters of Man United and the books are based out of the Cayman Islands, so you get tax-free as well. You don't get taxed on any of them, on, on any of them deals or the money. The revenues when you wire it back to to Tampa Bay, mate. No, you're getting it all free loaded over. So you suddenly give them five point yeah. five or near. Big up Nuridin. What? Yeah, big up Nuridin. When you go to that figure, if you convert it, they're getting six over six billion dollars. So yeah. that is a billion dollars each that they will walk around within their bank accounts. They can walk around Tampa Bay, wherever. Just don't walk around Manchester. You yeah. might get mugged. Yeah, no, I hear you. You, you, know, you, know what we're, you know what we're saying. At the end of the day, yeah, 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 yeah. they'll get um, a billion pounds each, so they'll get yeah. what they wanted in the end. Of course. Um, Zayn Mias is coming in, being shameless, saying, Zayn Mias, I bet you a grand Arsenal finish higher than United next season. I heard United budget for the summer won't even buy a meal at Salt Bay. This guy, you know, man, he's shameless tonight. And Zambia says, at least Jim Radcliffe is not and not Jimmy Savile taking him. Listen, hey, listen, man, let's not get into that one, man. Let's not get my channel locked off, mate. Uh, see, um, but yeah. Ben Jacobs uh, tweet. Yeah, I'm going to read a tweet. Yeah, I'm going to read a thread. I'm going to read a thread about Jim Jacobs, uh, Ben Jacobs, sorry. Uh, although the two foundation leaks offer 
has not been disclosed. My understanding is that it's over 7 billion, 5.6 billion all in, inclusive of a pledge investment. Bids are placed in dollars in this process. Sources indicate the club valuation part in the same ballpark as Jim Radcliffe believes there is north of 6 billion and thus circa 5 billion. And the pledge investment from Chick Basim is understood to be 1 billion, 0 0.8 billion in dollar, in pounds. Um, Qatar side adamant again as they were in April 28th is on top, not inclusive. So Jim Radcliffe hasn't disclosed any pledge investment. Of course not, because it's not relevant. Really that's why. Yeah. It's just happening right and now. Guess what? And yeah, guess it's what? not happening. And guess what? Ben Jacobs is talking shit because he don't know nothing. No, 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 no. He, he no, he no, 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 no. I'm gonna defend him. Guy, he doesn't know no, no, some no. stuff about let's, it. Let's call him what for what he is, bro. He's a fraud. No, 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 no. Bro. We're not gonna call him, man, because he's a good friend he's of mine. Liable. I've I swear down, this guy is just like Fabrizio, but just a tapping merchant. He knows no, 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 he, he knows news. stuff, man. When he comes to Man United and then he's on top of nothing. Don't get giddy over this. You know, this is this is listen. this is literally jumping at the gun. Why didn't he tweet? Why didn't he tweet that two hours ago? Because because obviously he learns information right now. It's it's you, you understand oh, information as you go along. Whatever, man. He's trying to jump the gun, just like the rest of them, man. It's it's bollocks. Well, he's well, bollocks. Well, 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 but to be fair, he's not making he's not making information he's not a man that's United the world of he's, he's not a man United journal, and he definitely definitely is not no financial journal. Now, he knows his financial I'm, stuff. He's not telling us anything that we don't know, though. Like, I'm not, not saying that he's telling us... Finances, man. The stop, don't, I just don't fan base or the, the, the 1,000 people in there watching right now is to get giddy over this guy. That's why I say choose your journals carefully. Yeah. The, the, one, the one thing I guess we can, we can take from it is whenever any journalist, and I'll speak from it from being one myself, whenever a number is mentioned, I wouldn't pay attention to the number because... There's only three people re realistically that know what what the numbers that groups have bidded. Really, that's Rain because they receive the bids, the major family because they're the sellers, and then the third one's the bidders because they've placed the offer. The realistically, they're the only three people. But if these numbers, like people are saying, if they get leaked, if they get leaked out to these GMAs and stuff, then at the end of the day, what are we laughing at, lads? What are we laughing at? I said, look like and Jacob won't be on my channel anymore then, no. I don't need to say, you're growing anyways, man. He gave you dead numbers. <laughs> right then, mate. So true, he gave you say dead numbers, mate. You're not as big as you think you are. No, no <laughs> but like I say, when they mentioned the numbers in, in the argument, it's BS, really, because at the end of the day, nobody knows the numbers. Because if these groups leak these things out, or they, like, I don't know, purposefully or accidentally, like, they can get sued, like, for multi, you know, figures, six plus figures. Like, if you if you disclose something that you're not supposed to, like, it's going to fall mm. back on you massively, mate. So at the end of the day, you can say for what it is with, with numbers. And this is what I mean, like, and so some of the wording as well, like, it's almost as if they try and word things to make you, un, you know, impressed or m make you over ambitious. Like mm. Mike Keegan, when he did the thing about the evaluate that Sir Jim's valued it more than Man United has, well, uh, then sorry, Shay Justin has. Well, of course he has. He's got to. He's got to value Manchester United at fifty percent more than what Shay Justin would do at sixty nine, hundred, whatever. He's got to do that. Otherwise, he might as well just retract his offer. Because if he doesn't value it more at fifty percent, and Sheikh Yassin values it more at sixty nine, oh well, he's done then, isn't he? What can he do? So the sort of the sort of words and the terminology that goes around, and I guess the same, you know, what goes around comes around at the end of the day. But Sir Jim Ratcliffe, as we've all alluded to, he has played his hand. He, we know the proposal. We know the we know if you like a rough ballpark figure. Mm. It's half. It's roughly half of what the guys' family are asking for, which would mm. be quota of three billion pounds here <laughs> and now, or even less than that. But if you want to go down that road, that's fine. The guitar is me. It doesn't make sense overall. No, no, no. I'm not texting. I'm not texting him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Trust me, bro. Trust me, bro. I'm not texting. I saw. Trust me, bro. <laughs> bro, bro. Let me show you, man. I'm not texting Big Jacobs, man. Aye, aye, aye. Aye, Ben, I can't lie. Yeah. Why the last time I texted him? That was the last time, so we haven't spoke since then. 
So I'm not texting him. No, so, so, so he's been deleting the text, you know. Look at him. No, you can't delete text on Instagram. <laughs> you can't delete text. Hey, say, Ryan, 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 Ryan. <laughs> oh god, moving like Jim Radcliffe. Yo, listen, I'm not PR, man. I, mean, I tell it to your face. I'll be like, yo, I will take it for the guys. The man them said what he had to say, and it is what it is. You know what I mean? <laughs> but yeah, man. Um, oh, listen, man. I just think to me. You know, boys are coming in peace. Yeah, man, you best come in peace, mate. Because you got you got tomorrow why to think about. Why, wait, wait, Steve, why you got a blue love heart? What's going on there? It's blue, isn't it? Blue, it's blue for city, blue, isn't it? City. Yeah, I think I've seen him on my channel a couple of times. I think I know it is. Yeah, yeah, big up, man. Big up everyone yeah. here, man. Still a thousand people on here, and it's nearly 11 o'clock, man. I'm not gonna lie to you, I'm shattered, man. So big up to everybody who's here. Big up to the, the love of the channel. Make sure you like the video, man. Everyone right here, right now, like the video. Let's 500 likes minimum. Before the end of the stream, 500 likes, man. But, Kaz, when do you think anything's going to happen now? Like, when? what's your kind of, like, order of kind of timestamps now? Like, you know, um, it could happen in a minute. We were, on, we were watching the Champions League tonight and it was just happened. As long as Ben Jacobs don't tweet anything, I think we'll be all right. Um, you think I, so? Um, I think, because I think he's going to rerun the same way he did with Chelsea. I don't think he can go into the transfer window. I think that messes up a lot. And I think you could. I think Ten Hag can go and, only, and Man United can only go off promises made from probably both parties of Jim Ratcliffe and also uh, Sheikh Jassim. Like obviously, I think they have to be in contact because you have got to know what the future is going to be. I'm going to say not ne- uh, because it's interesting. You said that uh, Tom Journo, uh, Tom, um, mm. that is made today on a Tuesday, not a Friday, typically before the stock market closes or anything. So I'm mm. gonna. Mm. I would say. Two weeks max, I would say towards the end of the month, because we've been given deadlines. We got told the first yeah. quarter, then we got told, you know what's uh, magic? April, and then now it's Sorry May. There, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I feel like this is going to be so because even if yeah, they say now the next one will be Jim Rack is the preferred bidder, that will be it now. And then all of a sudden, Qatar will feel jealous and they'll say, Well, you know what, we'll give you another money. Like, until they say that's it, like it's done. Yeah. But, Jim yeah. Rackley, you are now the front. You are basically. Say, say, say. Why do you th- why do you think though that privately they've, if you like, made their mind up, but they won't come public with it? Why? You like because if you, you made your money. mind about if you made your mind about something, announce it. Just fucking. No, say I, it. I, I think simple. there was was there not something along that uh, Tom where. I think Glazers were doing stuff like that and they were running the price up, and then the, what they were doing is obviously there was prop for the Qatar. And Jim Ratcliffe, meaning hmm. they have to bid more and more because they're put, plotting against each other. Something along those lines. I think that was back in March. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and, I, and, yeah. and when they signed NDAs, I'm pretty sure there was a journalist. I think it was Mike Keegan said that, um, remember, he went flat for like three weeks. Apparently, they put someone was told them lot to stop putting a PR out because they know what they're doing. The Glazers don't know what they're doing for the stock market because they're raising prices. Yeah. And then before you know it, it signed, somehow flipped and you see United, uh, you know, I think someone must have flipped the prop and said, yeah, the Glazers might actually might stay in the stock market for the United share price went straight down to like $11, $13 or yeah, something. Yeah. But they, they, listen, they, 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 they can get in, in massive, you know, legal lawsuits and, you know, mm. repertoires for, for what they're doing with the, the stock exchange market where statements come out and one minute the, the price rockets up and then next minute it goes down. There's something, there is something along the lines of market manipulation and, you can it's, it's basically, if you like, take it from a football scenario, what's happening with City, where they fiddle with the books. The Glazer family are fiddling with the, you know, market every five minutes. One yeah. minute Manchester United goes up in, in valuation, the next it doesn't. But, mm. like, this is what I mean. Some of these figures, like $46.9 billion. That's, that's the latest like, Arab business. It's about, it's about £5.5 billion. Pounds. Like, the numbers are shy. They are actually shy. At the mm. end of the day, nobody knows the figures. Because when people state all of these things, do you know? Do you know? You can tell that it's shy, and the reason why, and I'll give you the, the context as to why. The British journals and the British media, mate, who are they backing? Let's be honest, yeah. who are they backing? Jim Radcliffe. They're backing their boy, aren't they? They're backing the Brit. They're backing their boy. Right, you get the news out from from the Qatari sources, the Qatari journals on Twitter and Doha yeah. News and all and all them, you know, media companies based in Qatar. Who are they backing? They're backing their boy, aren't they? And do you know do you know who's who's backing down the middle, mate? And who's saying absolutely nothing? American news. Bloomberg, they don't say they don't one minute they say Qatar, next minute they say Jim. Flip flop. Mm. 
But you've not got somebody who, through this whole thing, all they've heard is one thing and go straight down the middle. The one thing that I would say about this is, when you look at somebody like Mike Keegan, a lot of the information that he's got correct and a lot of the sort of yeah. things that he's propped out, regarding the Qatari side, have actually made sense and they've been factual. And if yeah, 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 held, they've held weight got, yeah. over the last yeah, yeah. couple of weeks, so I can respect what he has said in that case. But with with, with Sir Jim's case, who really, when they've when they've put something out about Sir Jim, has then stuck with that, whether it be in the next couple of days, the next week or so, then suddenly the following week they flip the story and say, "Oh, Qatar's done done an improved offer. They've done an improved bid. Yada yada." Like yeah. Mike Keegan, took, you know, was it a week or two ago, ten days ago? Also, Jim's the front runner, like he might as well be signed and sealed. Next minute now, because Sheikh Yassim's put another offer in, oh, there's a, there's a new twist in the tale. But like you said, Saeed, mm. the Glazer family have got what they want. So they come into this process and they wanted a bidding war. They can't have a bidding war when there's only one person who's prepared to bid more because yeah. they can bid more. Because Sir Jim Ratcliffe doesn't have the money to bid any higher now. He doesn't. No. It just becomes a case of. Trying to leech yeah. as much money as he can from Qatar. Can. That's what he yeah. becomes. Yeah. But you can tell that Sajim don't have the money, mate, because if he had the money, he would be going yeah. for sixty nine percent. He wouldn't be sitting here fiddling about pissing the fan base off. Yeah, that's fact. Yeah, you're then, right. You're right. To... I hate you. But the thing, the, the thing that I don't like about the whole Sajim thing is, there's these things where you're hearing things. He'll buy them out in two years, four years, this and the other. I am never taking somebody's word for anything anymore, especially not in football. Right. Don't in football or in business, when somebody says verbally that they agree upon something, don't ever take it seriously. Mm. Until you have it in black and white on pen and paper that but, they have agreed or they've got a certain clause to buy you out at this price or at this time. But these certain clauses, from what I know anyway, are that one of the parties would have to initiate the clause and mm. then the other party has to agree upon it so yeah. you could have a scenario where you get to a stage where sir jim does have the money in principle but if joel and avram don't want to go they don't have to agree to selling to him or they don't have to agree selling at all mm. and suddenly you've then got a situation where oh but we thought that you were buying them out and mm. you had to buy them out because that's what you had as a clause but then mm. suddenly, you wait two, three years until the fan base has died down. You've been in the door for a couple of years. You've got your feet under the table, if you like. And then suddenly, what? You flip the switch on Man United fans. He's yeah. done this. To, he's done this to Nice Football Club. So don't dare think he won't do it to fucking Manchester United. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, don't, I, don't I don't think that. he won't. You're right. You're because bro. he's already That's took that. enough slack as it is now. And we know people, certain people have been attacking his business, you know, in your yeah. you know, Twitter, Twitter feeds or whatever, like emailing them and whatever. We know people have been attacking them, but he's still here, isn't he? Yeah. He's still there. Mm. The guys from there are still here after 18 years. You can attack all, all the sponsors, you can attack all the commercial things. They're still here after 18 years, aren't they? Yeah. It doesn't drive right. them out. But the, the thing that gets me going the most, and I'll just make this last point, yeah. for 18 years, fans have protested to get the guys from out. Not for him to stay another minute. Never mind two, three, four years, another minute. 18 years, you either fucking go now completely <laughs> or you don't go at all. It's a simple, simple, simple scenario. I don't care if one of you stays or all six of you stay. You either all go as one or you all stay as one. Mm. Because at the end of the day, I'm not having this disharmony about families. And suddenly then, Man United will become like Coronation Street. Oh, there's been there's been a disharmony. The fact the, 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 the family's been broken apart. So, you know, Joel and Avram they don't speak to the other siblings now that they're, they're billionaires. Like, but at the end of the day, fans have put in their time, their effort, and their money into Bro, getting these effort, people out for eighteen effort, years. Effort's the worst one for me. Oh. Well, if it's true, if it, if it is, if it is true with a bid, then it's a no brainer, isn't it? Like that that whole valuation that Sir Jim's two point. Eight or three billion for fifty nine percent or whatever the hell it is. Yeah, goes to show it's 50, not really for fifty percent. Yeah, but fifty percent. It goes to show they, they want, they, they'd get nine. They'd still have nineteen, but they'll just buy somebody out for the. Mike, Mike yeah. Keegan did say. Mike Keegan did say the bid was. This is why I say certain journal. Let's call him a certain journal. He's probably waffling more time because Mike Keegan. If you read the uh the actual uh, article, was saying along those lines that. Even though with this extra pledge of money towards the bid, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, 
the valuation still is in Jim Ratcliffe's mm. favor, like overall. But again, um, it's like with with that, how much more? He didn't actually state how much more it was, and it's like, is it really mm. worth it at the end? And that's where I, that's where I sit with it, man. You got you got to look at it as a biz, in a, in a business way. Yeah. Money yeah, now, of course, you have to. You money, now, now, you have to. Not, money now is mm. money now. You you don't want to tick. Who wants to get ticked without the you know about the full valuation? Let's say Man United continue to do bad and everything like that. You're not going to get your full money, mate, because you know what? The valuation of the club's actually a lot less than you think. Yeah, yeah. So that's all going off of a promise. Well, so, it's, not, it's not. It's not. It's not the valuation now, though, is it? The reason why they can demand such a high figure is because. Whoever takes it over, if they have the money behind them, they can grow the club. That's why. Yeah, yeah, they can and grow it exponentially. The, the, the thing is, if Man United, the funny thing is, if Man United actually had a new, if Man United were like I would say Tottenham are now in a situation where you have a new stadium, you have a new, a new training ground, and you can still make investments in the team, the Glazer family would still probably be here now because they know that over time Manchester United will grow in evaluation, and then instead of getting six, they might get closer to eight or ten or. Something ridiculous Facts. along the lines of that, yep. but it's like you say, it's all about the t- like. There's not been a set timing in this process, and that's one thing why I've always said it, it is a yeah. It might be a bit of a left field thing to say, but there is no no way in stopping that you could have a multi billionaire. You could have Jeff Bezos wake up tomorrow and think, do you know what? Fuck it, I want to buy Man United. Mm. And do you know what? If he can get the fees and figures in place and he can get the right numbers there. And he and he pays six billion pounds. What can we as fans do about that? You yeah, can't yeah. do anything about it. It's no. signed, sealed, and done because the Glazer family would have got what they wanted all along. Yeah. The Qataris, but... Sir Jim, and the whole process would have been a sham for what six months, where you have mm. one multi-billionaire just wakes up the next day and thinks, you know what? I've had my coffee. Right, let's get onto my account now. I want to buy Man United. Yeah. And these people, you know, these people can do these things because. They've had the contacts to do it. That's why they become multi-billionaires yeah, yeah, from yeah. doing yeah. things like these. Like you, you buy a business overnight, transform it for two, three years, and then you sell it for multi-billions. Like mm. this is the and that, if you like, that's the story for Jim Ratcliffe. I'm a local lad from Manchester. You know, I, I was brought yeah. up in the council. I, I've gone from the council state, can, yeah. council the state to, to you know being a multi-billionaire. The Glazer family, they could make a, they could probably write a book if they wanted. According to, Ara- according to Arabian Business, um, it says the offer Let me just get your super chat before you go. Dollars. Yeah, go on. Let me just get your super chat. Big up my suit says it, it simply comes down to whether the Glazers want a full sale or not. If if they don't, they'll go with Jim Radcliffe. If they do, they'll go with Shake. And also, big up to Ricky. He says Glazers can always say we changed our mind. It's legal. Um, I don't know, man. I don't know. But listen, people, I want to wrap this up. Um, big up to Tom who's just left there probably battery died there but big up to everybody who's locked in man guys have we hit 500 likes guys can you check for me if we hit 500 likes here uh, um, it's on it's been hitting 500 likes man it's been a late 500, stream 509 509 were yeah 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 let's give him a clap man shout out to everyone man listen man big up to everybody here we'll be back for Mandem Talk tomorrow Mandem Talk could be lively tomorrow you know could be lively could we talk be. about well if people don't know if people want to if you want to click on the next stream after this is finished and don't close your phones in about 20 minutes 25 minutes you're going to see yeah. we need everyone against man city in the chat so we got you know raul you know, you know raul from raul, DR sports. In, yeah. yeah raul from dr sports the, the the cheeky one he's on against that so that's probably going to be a bit fiery and i think mm. it's everyone against man City at this point isn't it <laughs> I'm a shot <laughs> I'm telling you. I'm telling yeah, you. Someone yeah, say so play was... the tune. <laughs> All right, let me play the tune and we'll wrap up, man. What's that for? You don't know the tune? The guitar tune? Oh. I can't oh, remember. Yeah. Oh, it's a guitar tune. Hello, Madrid. Yeah, my old fake Jacob.